For the key number of iPhone units, we are a little above. We're about a million units above for the quarter. So we feel good about the June quarter relative to that metric. We're actually slightly below on services. 26% year over year growth is a big number. Uh, they did 31% last quarter, so we, we would expect a bit of a deceleration. I wouldn't expect, in other words, much upside to the services number. But those will probably be the two key metrics, and then I think obviously the guidance will be key as well because it will give us a little bit of a flavor for what's coming with the next iPhone release. Are you in agreement with the idea that services could be the key number in terms of what could shift the attitude on the stock and get it away from focusing so much as a hardware company and now actually being able to cultivate that whole halo system and ecosystem that a lot of analysts have been hoping for for a long time. Yeah, I definitely agree with that over kind of a longer term or multi-quarter period. I'm not necessarily sure that it makes a ton of difference for the June quarter specifically, but our expectation is that um, this quarter and, and really into fiscal 19, we're going to see uh, higher units of iPhone sales, and, and that'll create a little bit larger of an ecosystem of iPhones that have been recently upgraded, which will be a larger uh, ecosystem into which to sell services. So we do think that's a key focus, not necessarily for the June quarter itself. So though. talk about what they have in the pipeline in terms of new upgrades to the iPhone and tell, tell me whether I'm right or wrong that the last upgrade cycle didn't seem to have the, the sort of same amount of juice that some earlier cycles have. And that's sort of a long way of asking, is the mojo still there when you upgrade the iPhone? Yeah, you're absolutely right. The, the iPhone 10 cycle, which was dubbed the, the super cycle, didn't really turn out to be a super cycle. And I think there's, there's good reason for that, which is in hindsight, you know, Apple kind of slapped this phone down in front of us and said, here it is, it's the new phone, it's $1,000, take it or leave it. And a lot of people said, I'll, I'll leave it and I'll see what you come up with next. And we've been talking more about a super long cycle, which is a multi-year upgrade to the next gen form factor that is the iPhone 10 form factor. And we think that's what's coming this fall is we're going to see an iPhone 10 Lite. Um, I don't know if that's exactly what they'll call it, but something that removes some, some of the bells and whistles from the iPhone 10 and brings the price point down. And then we also expect an iPhone 10 Plus, so a larger screen for those that want a little more screen real estate. So more evolution, no more revolution anymore from this company. Is that, I mean, we get a watch, we get a, you know, a, a, a new iteration of the iPad. A minor iteration change for the iPhone, and that's about it. Is that it? I think I think for that's the that's the right bet for the next one to two years. And specifically, you know, we, we just don't expect any sort of significantly innovative new categories coming from Apple. But we do think there's enough juice just within the iPhone upgrade cycle uh, this year with a wider array of next gen phones to to drive growth and ultimately that expanding ecosystem into which to sell services.